Did the word filling station on the title of this video confuse you? Does anybody really call them filling stations anymore? They're gas stations. But most people today call them Crosby's or Mini Marts or country fairs or even Sheets. But they used to be called filling stations. And this is the Bradford filling station. It opened in May of 1929. And we're gonna look at the Bradford filling station in this edition of Coffee with the Curator. If you didn't recognize that old photograph, here's a modern photograph taken just a couple of weeks ago. This is at the corner of Main and Congress Street. And when it was built, it was considered to be the choicest property location in the city of Bradford. Of course, back in the day, there was no such thing as a gas station, especially on the corner of Main and Congress Street. In this old photograph, which dates from about 1910 or so, you can see there's a large building on the right. And that held a variety of businesses, including the Williamson Restaurant, which was quite popular, and later a grocery store and some other small stores. And it was also considered at one point to be haunted, but I don't think it was. The view on this postcard is taken looking directly down Congress Street. Nowadays, I would be standing in front of Northwest Savings Bank looking down the street, but in those days, it was probably the Lyceum Theater. That large church steeple that you can see on the right, further down the street, is the Baptist Church, and that's going to be torn down and rebuilt further down Congress Street in 1940. And of course, across the street from that Baptist Church is the Carnegie Library, which has been built in 1901. The building went through various ownership, but in 1922, it caught fire and was burned so badly that it was condemned. At that time, it belonged by a man named Harry Levy and Charles Samuels. And you may remember Harry Levy because he's gonna move right across the street and open a newsstand there and operate it for many years to come. With the old condemned building burned down and cleared away, Blanding's dining car was moved in this place. This is a photograph of the Blanding dining car with the bank and the option house in the background. The dining car was owned by Ernest Blanding and his wife Ruth, and it wasn't here very long, only for about three years when the entire property was sold to three wealthy Bradford men who saw the opportunity to build a gasoline station. Wait a minute, I said gasoline, I mean filling station. Landing's dining car was moved to Kennedy Street and put beside the Graham Florist shop. Which brings us right back to the Bradford filling station. When the three men approached city council for a permit to build a gas station, the reaction was not what they expected. People were horrified. Oh my God, it's going to blow up and kill us all, was the general reaction. A filling station on Main Street? There go the property values. And it's going to cause all kinds of confusion with traffic. Even the unions in the city protested that it would be a menace to safety. Now, there were other gas stations around, of course. I mean, cars were pretty popular by 1928, but they were either isolated or they were in professional garages, like the General Garage or the Star Garage, not independently located on Main Street. But the three wealthy men, who, by the way, were Bill Piper, T. Edward Hanley, and Frank Bauer, managed to get their way and a permit was issued for the gas station, which opened officially in May of 1929. For all the fuss, the Bradford era made a pretty big to-do out of the opening of the gas station. Wait a minute, filling station. And here's one of the full page ads on the day that it opened. Pretty fancy, I'd say. Of course, there were a few stipulations as well from city council. The Bradford Filling Station Corporation had to carry an insurance policy of $10,000 against any possible mishaps at the gas depot, and one of their employees had to be sworn in as a special officer to handle the congested traffic. 
that was predicted. And here is the photograph that appeared in the Bradford era on the day it opened, May 3rd of 1929. It was really a beautiful filling station in its day. It had been professionally designed by Thomas Hendricks, a well-known local architect, and had certain features that were unique, such as the gasoline pumps located in the back wall. This was because of the narrowness of the lot on the Congress Street side. You can see their location in this modern photograph of the back of the gas station. And probably one of the most remarkable features of this new filling station was a 15-foot neon sign that advertised the price of oil and gas. The Bradford era wrote, It's odd and attractive. The main scheme is a regular oil derrick, which is outlined with the new neon idea, which is being used extensively in the larger cities. A spray of oil flowing up and over one side is worked out with the lettering gas and oil at the foot of the sign and can be seen from a great distance down Main Street. The Bradford Landmark Society has a set of the blueprints from Thomas Hendricks, and this is his actual sketch of that neon sign. It is odd and attractive. It remained a filling station slash gas station for many years. Jack Hermes bought it in 1946 and managed it as a Kendall service station until 1976 when he sold it to Ray Ford and it was renamed Main Street Kendall. Today the filling station slash gas station is long gone but the memories of the Bradford Filling Station remain a nostalgic part of Bradford's past. 